All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And super excited to come back today with this episode. We've had some technical difficulties last uh, time or two, and but we're, we're pushing through. This is a an episode of perseverance and resilience and all kinds of great things, right? Uh, at the same time, yeah, it's just uh, that's just what happens when you're trying to conduct business and do things on the internet. It just sometimes it just doesn't quite work. But today's the day. Today's the day it's going to work. Today I have back with us. Actually, it's back with us because I actually we've started this interview before. But this will be the first time you've probably heard of, at least from me in the Rich Mind podcast, of Heidi Shaw. And I'm excited to have Heidi back on here with us today. So Heidi is a business strategy and visibility coach. She's a best-selling author, speaker, and host of the Be She podcast. And she is actually an acronym for Be Seen, Be Heard, and Be Empowered. She's been featured in, on Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, and the Daily Herald, and has been named one of the top 30 inspiring entrepreneurs to look out for in 2024 by the NYC Journal. Heidi works with female entrepreneurs to build six and seven figure businesses so they can create their dream life for themselves and lo and their loved ones on their own terms. She believes every woman who wants to have a six and seven figure business gets to have it. She empowers women to be seen and heard and leave a lasting impact on others in the world with their message and story. She's a mother of two children, 15 and 13, who were the catalyst behind her starting her entrepreneurial journey. She's also an animal lover, and you can often find her fostering and transporting animals looking for their forever home. So just that bio by itself is just why I'm so excited to have this conversation. Just the inspiration, trying to help uh, women out there be inspired, be seen, be heard. Just we're going to have such a fun conversation. So without me, keep babbling on here. Heidi, welcome to the show. This can be a lot of fun. Thank you, Randy. I'm excited, too. I can't wait to dive in. We did try this before. And we had some internet challenges, but you know what? We get to be perfectly, ambitious, which is what I teach anyway. So it's just awesome and absolutely perfect that we get to come back together. And I'm appreciative that we're, we're back together. So that's one thing with on this entrepreneurial journey. And I'm sure you would agree that, you know, a lot of times we, we try to make it look like it's flawless and it's perfect. And, you know, all the hairs are where they need to be. And all the stuff is just perfect, even the backgrounds and yeah, that's, that's not true. So if anybody, if you're getting that feeling from anybody out there, uh, yeah, I would be the first to admit that, no, that's not true. And we're, we're living proof of that, aren't we? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if you look at my background right now, the lighting isn't spectacular and I'm a visibility coach. So I teach lighting, I teach camera, I teach microphone, I teach all that out confidence. But at the end of the day, showing up is what matters the most. And many times it gets to be perfectly imperfect. My lighting isn't great here. We have, we're very overcast here in Florida. We just had a big thunderstorm. So I'm just grateful that the internet is cooperating with me right now with, after that storm. Um, but this is where my internet is the strongest. My office is, didn't seem to be working with you and I the last <laughs> time. So uh, we're, 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 we're rolling with it, but I'm not as bright and light as you are, Randy. Well, right now with the and, yeah. So yeah, don't worry about that. That's, that's exactly right. That's where the video, if people want to watch us on video, they can, it'll be on the YouTube, the YouTube and Spotify now has videos, but at the same time, yeah, if everybody's just listening to us on audio, nobody will ever know. And that's the beauty of, of podcasting, <laughs> beauty of podcasting. Yes. So I went through a lot of the high level bullet point things about you, but I would love for you to go a little bit deeper into your story. Uh, tell us a bit about, about yourself, obviously your inspiration, you're helping women out there become entrepreneurs themselves. Yeah, go as deep and as wide as you'd like, but I'd love for you to take a few minutes and just share your story with us. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love what I do. I love working with women. And um, the reason I do is because when I started my business like five, six years ago, the reason it started was because I was moving through a divorce and my children were little. They were, they're now 15 and 13, but that, at that point they were about like eight and seven or seven and six. Um, and I had been a stay-at-home mom up until that point. So I drove them to school. I picked them up. I was a homeroom mom. I took them to their activities. I was co-chair of the auction committee two years in a row. I was heavily involved in their day-to-day. -day. And once I, we were moving through the divorce, I now needed to figure out finances. I needed to figure out how to provide myself with an income in order to take care of me, myself, and the children. And I also had five animals at the time, too. So I had a lot to be um, to take care of. So I was like, what am I going to do? And the one thing that I kept coming back to is whatever I do, I want to be home with my kids. That was really, really important to me. So early on, I found my why. And I talk about that a lot with my clients. I'm like, you get to find your why and tap into that. 
because it needs to be emotional. It needs to be a why that makes you cry. If it's not something that brings tears to your eyes when you think about it, it's not going to be strong enough to sustain you in this entrepreneurial space when those days get hard because they do get hard. Entrepreneurial road is a hard journey. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, and, but if you're connected to that, why it's going to keep you moving forward. So when I started my business, I found coaching on Facebook, on social media. And I was like, Oh, I could do that. They, you know, they're all crushing it. This is so, so easy. I'm going to, I'm going to crush it right out of the gate, you know, Randy. And it just, unfortunately wasn't like that. So I started my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey and I soon realized that I needed to be seen. And I was like, wait, what? I need to like post content. I need to be vulnerable. I need to share my story and my journey. I'm like, first of all, no. Second of all, nobody's going to want to hear it. I don't want to, I don't want to show up in victim mode. Right. So I had a huge fear of being seen and putting my message out there. While I was building my business, I worked two jobs, but I hid in the background as I was building it because I had this huge fear of visibility, huge fear of being seen. And I was scared of rejection. I was scared of ridicule. I was scared of people going, who the heck does she think she is? And I didn't start off, out, I'll start off in business strategy. I did not start off there because like Randy, I knew zero about business. But I did start off with helping people with their health and wellness because years before my divorce, before I got married, I was in the health and wellness space. And the coach said, do what you know. I was like, oh, I know health and wellness. I can help people with that. Well, I didn't realize that over the years that had shifted. Now it was extremely niche down with everybody moving into the online world, more and more people moving into the online world. And I was like, it was now about gut health, keto, you know, vegan. There were so many different niches in that health and wellness space. It didn't light me up. It didn't get me excited. So I ended up moving into transformation because I was moving through a transformation myself. So that was part of my journey. But I was in this coaching program while I was working two jobs. And I was lucky enough to have this woman inside who we became friends. And her and I were in the DM. And she was out there. She was visible. She was like crushing it in that space. And I was hiding. And now I say, don't be a hiding Heidi. I tell people that. <laughs> like, don't be a hiding Heidi. Because um, I bring, bring them back to my journey. And she reached out to me on DM one night and she was like, I have a challenge for you. Will you accept it? And her and I had become friendly and I was like, sure. Well, how bad could this be? She goes, great. I want you to go live inside the group. And your topic is my breakdown to my breakthrough. And it was the perfect topic because she knew immediately I was going to break down, which I did. I started shaking. My chest got tight. My throat started closing and I started sweating. Immediately I was in shutdown mode. I'm like, I can't do that. She goes, I'm here with you and I will be there to support you. But I'm on the other side of the pond. It's after midnight here. She was in England. I'm in Florida. She said, so I want to be there for you, but you need to do it. If you're going to do it, you need to do it. So I jumped into the group and it was a private based group. I jumped into the group and I was shaking. My chest was tight. My throat was closing and I was sweating. But not only that, I was crying. Randy, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pretty cry. It wasn't a cute cry. It was a full on sobbing, ugly cry that I needed like a box and a half of tissues and had zero tissues with me. My <laughs> face started swelling. My eyes started swelling. And the, the strength or the, the, the deep emotion I was going through with this fear, I started, a migraine started coming. So now I was going through all this and then I, my head was pounding. So I made it through, I think three people hopped on. I made it through and I closed the live stream. She hopped back in the DM with me and she was like, that was awesome. And I said, no, it wasn't. And she <laughs> said, it was amazing. I have another challenge for you. Will you accept it? And I said, well, it can't be any worse than that. I didn't die, but I feel like I did. I want to. And she said, well, great. Then you get, I want you to go live for the next five days. And I said, good night. And I shut down my computer and I went straight to bed. The next morning, I was scared to death to open up that Facebook group for the, to see the comments that I was going to see. I expected to be ridiculed. I expected to have, you know, these comments of what, I don't know what I expected, but I wasn't expecting support. So I got into the Facebook group and I looked at the comments and I was so blown away with all the love, all the support, all the comments of people saying, thank you for showing up so vulnerably. Thank you for showing up so real and raw. 
you've inspired me to now do something scary. Some people admitted that they had a huge fear of going live too. And I thought I was the only one, you know, and they were, did many women, many men in there were saying, thank you. I've been, had this fear of, I've been hiding and I've been scared to go live. And now you've inspired me to step out of my comfort zone today and do this. Or I've been playing small in other areas of my business and you've inspired me to step out of my comfort zone. And one of the coaches inside that program did a live, an impromptu training that day. She went live in the group and did an impromptu training around my live stream and taught on the power of vulnerability, the power of doing it scared, the power of showing up and be in doing it ugly, doing it messy and how that, how that can really change the trajectory of your business, but also your life when you, when you take those chances. So that's my story. That's my journey. And that's why now I love on my podcast talking about being seen, being heard and empowering yourself to do so. Because when you empower yourself to step through the fear and walk through it, you are empowering others and inspiring others to do. I love that. So as I mentioned, this is take two on our going through your story, right? And so to hear it again, that was, that was a lot of fun for me again, because I can just visualize, obviously we, as we're recording, right, we're producing content, both of us. And the idea of doing that, I can remember when I was first going through that process myself, it, it is scary. The first time you go live and you see somebody's on there, it's like, wow, what's going on? You know, you're just like, you're right. You're so in, at least I'm speaking for myself now. I'd be curious, obviously how it was for you, but you're, it's like, you're so in your head. You're thinking, oh my gosh, what is going on? Do I know what I'm saying? Is my mouth moving? Um, I, what do I look like? I just, all the random negative self-doubt thoughts, just, just all of a sudden just rush to your brain, rush to your mind. And to control them in that moment is, is difficult. But when you get through the other side, which is what I'm hearing, which is blossom into what you're beginning to create and do for the, your clients and do for other other women that are in your circle of influence. I Absolutely. would love to just unpack that a little bit more as far as like yeah. how you, so we just, my wife and I, we actually just recorded an episode. It just launched actually today. And we were talking about comfort zones. That was the topic that we were having and pushing through comfort zones and pushing through that anxiety of a comfort zone when you realize when you're pushing up against it. So when you were talking about that, that was resonating with me as well. But talk about how this person, this supposed friend in this group, I just want to unpack that a little bit further. How that, how you were feeling is you were talking about how you were crying and just basically, I, I can only imagine, like you said, I wish I could see it. Do you have a recording of it? I don't. It was in a oh, private nuts. Facebook group and that group was <laughs> to grab before it closed down. I was completely in a different mind space and I wasn't like saving stuff like then. And I wish I had it. Yes, it would that'd be, be a great teaching moment, right? Uh, it would be mind blowing for me to go back and be able to watch that for sure. So yeah, that's my, one of my regrets is not, and I, that's how I tell people, I'm like, save your ass because yes. you're going to, you're going to grow. I mean, I could go back two years from now and watch my growth, but it wasn't what it was like the very first moment of my very first live stream. Uh, and I would have no problem sharing it now where I was mortified that that day. But now I would chop it up and be like, you're never going to tell everybody you're never going to be as bad as I was. You'll <laughs> never, nobody will ever be as bad as I was. That's how horrible it was. But yeah, if somebody would have told me six years ago that I would have a podcast called Be She, Be Seen, Be Heard, Be Empowered, I would have thought they were crazy. I would have lost everything. My life's everything on that thing. Uh, but yes, it, you know, every time you're seen and in different ways, it's scary. Some people have no problem going well. They're out, like, I'm an introvert. I am, I grew up extremely paralyzingly shy. I, and people are shocked now when they hear I'm an introvert. I'm like, yes, I am. I get to step back and regain my energy. And it takes me a little get to, to prepare to hit that live button. Even though I can go live on a dime now, it's still, I get to, like, get myself up and motivated for it so I can show up with high energy. And many times I get in my own head, I'm like, what am I going to talk about today? Is somebody going to care about what I'm talking about? And that's that fear and that stuff still shows. Up. So, yeah. <laughs> and every time you're doing something new, now there's reels and there's different types of video and format. Going on my first podcast and doing my first interview, it, the fear is going to continue to show up every time you're doing something new. So, I know that you talk, I love that you and your wife talked about comfort zones because that's where the fear comes back. When you're about to step, because we can get comfortable, right? I can get really good at going live now and I'm super comfortable with that. 
But then when I was first doing my first interview on a podcast, all that fear came back. Are they going to care what I have to say? Who's going to want to listen to me? You know, am I going to be good enough for the, am I going to do a good job for the host? You know, I like all of these things started coming up and that fear started creeping in and I had two choices. I could cancel and run or I could step through it and, and navigate it. And, and I tell everybody, if you, you know, when it comes to being seen, one thing you should absolutely be doing is guesting on podcasts because it's going to help you with your messaging. It's going to help you with your relationships. It's going to help you with getting really good at the flow of conversation and being able to share your message, being able to pivot and and get really good at answering questions. But again, like you said, like every time we're out of our comfort zone, that fear shows up and we get to get comfortable with getting uncomfortable. Like now I get, when the fear shows up, it's funny, Randy, and I um, hope I'm not talking too long, but I, this fear showed up for me last October, there was a speaking competition and the, and I was like, do I do it? Do I not do it? And I really wanted to do it. It was in Miami. But I, it was a week, the following weekend. So I had a week to prepare and my schedule was full. There was not a moment that I would be able to prepare. The and I said, okay, I can either dive in or I can skip it and wait till later. So I'm thinking about it. I, I remember I'm in my kitchen and I was on the phone with my business. And she's like, are you going to do it or not? I said, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to have the time to prepare. And immediately, Randy, my chest got tight. I started shaking. I started sweating and my throat started closing. And I immediately thought back while I was on the phone with her of my first live stream. And I, so I said to her, I said, you know what? I have to do it. Yes, I'm doing it. Because as soon as those, that, those feelings in my body showed up, I said, oh my gosh, this is the moment that I get to recognize and go, thank you for the fear showing up so powerfully because now this is my next cut. This is my next level. And even if I fall on my face, at least I try. And well, I made it through the first round. I made it through yeah. the first round. Oh, did you? So the competition, you made it through the first round? Oh, yeah. I was very, that was not exceeded my expectations. So I was thrilled with it. Well, see, so then the next time it's going to be even that much easier when you have something pop yeah. up like that, right? To step into that. Yeah. So that's why I love that as well. So one thing I talk about a lot on my podcast is just the awareness piece, being aware of your emotions, being aware of your physicality, right? The way that like you were talking about your chest gets tight, my palms will sweat. Sometimes I'll even get like a pressure headache. Like, you know what I mean? Just the pressure will just start to build. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when I'm in a nervous, pushing myself outside my comfort zone, it's like doing this now, like recording and stuff that, you know, a few episodes ago or even a couple of years ago or whatever we would make me nervous. It doesn't anymore because yep. I, the reps, you just do the reps, you get the reps in. So I would love for you to take just like a couple of minutes and I, you've shared a ton of wisdom there already, but as far as like maybe turn it into like a little mini coaching session, session, pretend like, you know, somebody, somebody's out there, everybody's got a message. Everybody has something to share that somebody will find value in that message. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little uh, courage. Sometimes it takes a little inspiration, but yeah. Can you help that person? That's like, what do I do? How do I, how exactly do I get that started? Is it just basically literally just hitting the, the, the phone, right? Or, or clicking your computer or, or signing up for the next speaking uh, tournament? Uh, what, what are the best ways? What do you suggest for something like that? For somebody that's like literally brand new, trying to find their message and where do they even get started? I think when you're starting, it's, it's not necessarily going to be just, you know, somebody saying, just do it, you know, because there's underlying things. And unfortunately, we can't just do it. Like, I'm scared of heights. I am not going to just jump out of an airplane tomorrow. That's not happening. So I need to, you, you are too. Yeah, 100%. I, I, see, yeah. I see videos of people way up high and I get, I get so wigged out by that. And it's on, it's on my phone. I mean, it's like, that's how, yeah, I, heights is something I'm very, very not good with. I'm sorry. I yep. didn't mean to hog up the, the little bit of the, yeah, but hundred percent. I'm not good with heights. <laughs> yes. I'm not, you know, jumping out of an airplane tomorrow. That's not how yeah, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, get over your fear, go big or go home. And I'm like, I love to go big or go home, but not when it, it, the fear is so, strong. you know, there's differences between like, you know, a, a little fear that we might have. And I'm sorry, my dog is, she's off. This work again, <laughs> we're coming perfectly imperfect from perfectly so. imperfect. We'll even see, we might not even edit that part out. That's the beauty of editing, so, I can take it out, but hey, it's all good. Yeah, she's rolling and she got stuck in all the wires. Um, so, <laughs> so when it comes to moving through the fear, especially like when you're just starting moving through this fear that you have, it's really important to understand where it's coming. 
Because when there, there's a scene, there's a fear of visibility, when there's a fear of being seen, it's not the fear of being seen, in my opinion, it's the underlying fear. So it's really important we understand where that fear is stemming from so we can name it and acknowledge it. Because uh, chances are that fear is going to show up again. So for me, it was a fear that came from childhood. I was extremely shy. I came from children are seen and not heard, right? But if you're, if you're not heard as a child, if you can't be heard, are you really seen? You're not. Mm. You can't be seen as your authentic self. So when I was being told in coaching, show up as your authentic self, be vulnerable. I couldn't do that as a child. So if I could, didn't grow up being able to do it and feeling safe doing it, I'm not going to be able to just throw, be thrown out there and feeling safe doing it on social media in front of, you know, thousands of people. So really understanding where that fear is stemming from and naming it. My fear was fear of failure, right? Fear of not necessarily rejection. I don't even know if I was there yet, but my fear of judgment was big for me because like I said, I was a stay-at-home mom and now all of a sudden I'm going on social media trying to like wanting to build this business. Uh, my, my self-talk was who does she think she is, right? And I was assuming that other people were going to be saying that my friends, my and at the end of the day, I, I, I started learning and I tell everybody, I'm like, we're not that special. People aren't thinking about us as much as we think they're thinking about us. And typically, if you are getting out of there, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, you're going to actually be inspiring to them. And then they're going to think about you. They wouldn't have thought about you otherwise. Right. So just, you know, when you when you if you think that other worried about what other people are thinking and now when I'm worried about judgment, I go, listen, Heidi, you're not special. People are not thinking about you as much as they're, you think they're thinking about you. And all I care about is if the people are doing it and they're getting out of their comfort zone, I care about what they think because we're down in the arena. We're doing it together. For the other people playing it safe, I don't care what they do. And if they don't like me, oh, well, they're not my people anyway, right? So really knowing what the fear is. There's fear of judgment. There's fear of ridicule. There's imposter syndrome. There's perfectionism. Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm a recovering perfectionist. There's fear of, did I say ridicule already? Fear of failure. And there's also on the flip side, fear of success. Some people, the fear of success will paralyze them from being seen because they're like, well, what if I do succeed? What if I do get to everything I want? What if my life does become all I envision? Am I going to be able to maintain? And I'm like, well, that's a great problem to have once you have it. But that can paralyze people in the process too. So really getting clear on what that fear is. And I dive into that with my clients. The second thing is, Take baby steps. I'm going to use the, the live stream example just because that was my biggest thing. But the live stream example, and going back to the, for me, where it stemmed from, for me, it was the fear, you know, children are seen and not heard. But on the opposite side, there's other people that have bold, incredible personalities. They, they're out there. They want to be seen. They, and it's in a great way, right? I wish I had that personality when I was a child. And they're, but they're told they're too much right? Oh, you're too much. Why don't you give somebody else a chance? Why don't you go sit in the background? Like you're always, why are you, oh, why are you like, right? So now their fear of being seen stems from, am I going to be too much? Are people going to think, you know, not like me because I'm always out there. So it comes from different places, but it's really important that we understand where it is and we name it and we're aware of it. If there's physical things that show up for you in that fear, like it does for me, now I can recognize it. Now I actually get excited when it shows up because I'm like, okay, that's my this is where I get to go. But starting small. So when it comes to going live, I can go, I can talk 30, 45 minutes, no problem, hour, whatever it is. And, but for other people, two minutes, you could do a two minute tip of the week, a two minute tip of the day, just to start getting your feet wet. Practice is a great way. Open up a private Facebook group. Facebook groups, people, some people don't realize this. You can open up your own Facebook group with just you in it. And you can practice your lighting, you can practice your, your mic, you can practice your camera, you can practice what you sound like, you could see your energy level, because many times we think we're full of energy when we're out there, right? Because we're so nervous. And then we watch it back. And we're like, hi, hi, everybody. How are you? I'm going live. This is my this is, you know, this is what I'm going to talk to you about today. And then we look back, and we're like, oh, my gosh, I thought I was giving it my all. But so really getting used to how you're showing up, getting used to seeing yourself on camera, getting used to what it looks like, your, your background and all of that, practicing on in your own private Facebook group and just getting comfortable with, with doing it. Because sometimes the tech can be a little overwhelming, right, for, for newbies. So just playing with it, having fun. Don't take yourself so seriously. You know, play some music. I Do whatever gets your energy up beforehand. I play music. 
I, whenever I'm in the bathroom getting ready, my music is blaring. I love, uh, I'm going to give you some little insight into me. I love musical theater. So I'm always play, playing musical theater in, when I'm getting ready. And that gets my energy up and me getting excited. So doing those things that make you happy, because when you show up happy and excited to share, the people that are watching you are going to be really excited, you know, to listen to you. And the second thing, and the other thing, I don't know if this is the second or the 10th, but the next thing is, the final thing I'll share with you, and I'm, there's many more I can share, but these are the basics that, to get you started, is when we're stuck in our own stuff and we're, we have our fear, we don't, maybe we're not sure of all the tech and we're just kind of getting our feet wet in this, focusing out, focusing on one person, who's one person that needs your message today? Who's one person that you can, you can support today? Because when we're focused out, to supporting and helping other people, it takes that that fear away. It lessens the fear. It also takes the focus on us and our stuckness, and it makes us feel good. And when we're helping someone else, guess what? Guess what happens? That law of reciprocity kicks in, and they want to help you and Rich. Yeah. Yes. All that, folks. Rewind and replay often. That was yeah. That was awesome. Just the idea. So it's like even showing up with energy. It's, so it's like even recording the podcast, right? We've got to show up with a certain amount of energy, the two of us, right? We've mm-hmm. got to, we, we don't necessarily know each other real well, but at the same time, we can have a connection or not based on the energy that we're showing up with. Right. And to do that, like you said, music, uh, a lot of times I try to take walks. Like I just stepped outside for a few minutes before we came on just to get some sunshine. Um, I don't know. It just changes your energy. I love that piece or that word, that uh, piece of advice, because that's exactly what I try to do as well. I also wanted to, the very end, the last piece there, as far as when you're talking, when I'm talking into the camera, I'm, I'm looking right into the camera right now. When I'm talking into the camera, I'm actually talking to a person. I think of somebody in my life, whether it's a family member, a friend, I could be my wife, somebody like that, that that's who I'm talking to. And that helps me keep my thoughts on track when I'm by myself in my room with a microphone and a light on and the camera in front of me. That's a few of the things that I do. And so I, that's what I was hearing you say there uh, with your, your advice there. And that's, that's super cool. So thank you for sharing so much. That was awesome. You're welcome. Thank you for la- allowing me to, and yeah, absolutely. Just focus out. That takes away, especially if you don't know what step to take next or not even visibility, just building your business. If you don't know what to do next, focus out. When you're focusing out, you're going to get in taking an action step forward. Clarity is going to come. Action brings clarity. So do it. Well, and um, one of my mentors always says, messy makes me millions. So, you know, and you sharing your story, Randy, like you shared. Another thing I could say is get really good at telling your story. And that's why mm. I love, like, I always share with people, guests on podcasts, get out there, collaborate with people and get really good at sharing your story. And it's going to be really messy at the beginning. You're not, some days I share my story and it just flows. And then there's other days and it's just like, I'm like, what? was that but it's okay and it's going to work perfectly and you get to be perfectly imperfect but really getting good at sharing your story because that's what's going to build a connection with your audience 100 percent. that's why i appreciate you coming on and sharing your story so far i know it's going to resonate with so many people out there which i appreciate so much so one thing you mentioned in the uh, I forget which piece, Sarah, you've shared so much wisdom already, but you were talking about perfectionism and actually the fear of success. Those are the two things I want to kind of tie into real quick. I would say that I personally have a, actually a fear of success to me. So that what happens is when I begin to achieve, I have a self-sabotage pattern. I'll just like, I'll, <laughs> it's bad. I'm working through that actively every day, but at the same time, it's like you, you go, you go, you go, you have a vision, you have the dream, you have the business, you have the stuff. I will just completely self-sabotage myself with the negative thoughts, with the whatever, you you know, whatever's going on in that moment. I'm just curious, do you have any, whether it's personal or do you have any from your, even from your clients that have similar issues that you can even help me with even today with the whole self-sabotage perfectionism type uh, way of being? Yeah, I have to say fear of success uh, resonates with me as well. And I think there's mm-hmm. things that we can do to procrastinate, which leads into self-sabotaging. Like we'll find things that or things will show up in our universe to take us off track or we'll be like, oh, of course that should, right? And so that is a very common thing. Um, when it comes to self-sabotaging, just really like, you know, getting understanding it, like you understand it. So when you see it showing up, go, aha. 
why do I, why is this showing up for me? Why am I doing this? And getting clearer on when that's showing up so you can break the pattern sooner. Because the more you are aware of it and acknowledge it, the sooner you're going to break that pattern and keep moving forward towards your goals. And be, again, go knowing your why, getting really clear what that why is. So when that self-sabotage shows up or that procrastination, for, for me, self-sabotage shows up in procrastination. I luckily was able to move through the perfectionism and I'll dive into that too. But so I'm not so much a perfectionist anymore, but I am a procrastinator and that is my self-sabotage that I do with myself. So then I feel very overwhelmed when I'm trying to pull it all together. Um, so knowing, understanding what that self-sabotage looks like for you, it could be perfectionism, it could be procrastination, it could be something else. So just getting aware of it and going, okay, this is showing up for me. Why am I doing this? Okay, it's the fear of success. I'm afraid if this does succeed, what's next? right? And like I said, action brings clarity. So every time we're bringing a step forward and trusting, trust is another thing, just trusting it's all working out for you as it should. And people have you, your wife has you, God has you, the universe, whatever you believe in. Um, and, and, and you get to just take the steps and enjoy the journey. I think we, we start focusing on everything like, oh my gosh, well, what if this happens? And what if this happens? What if this happens versus just enjoying the journey? Um, when it comes to perfectionism, I trying to be perfect. Everything I did when the when the kids were little, like I wanted to be perfect birthday parties. Everything had to be, I would I would make the I would make the you know the tool, uh, what do you call it? Skirts around the tables. I would make the whole candy bar and and oat chocolate covered. And they had to all make be branded for the perfect birthday, right? And when I started getting in my business, I thought I needed the same thing, and that held me back for a long time because I was trying to make everything perfect. And that comes along to, for me at least, with comparisonitis, Comparison, comparing myself and my journey to someone else's who is way further ahead of me, who is way, do, like in entrepreneurship way longer than I was. And I was like, well, why aren't I there? Well, you've only been doing this for four months, right? They've been doing this for four years. So don't compare your chapter two with someone else's chapter 20. And I think when we do that, that can lead to a lot of perfectionism. And again, if you want to write this down, my mentor shared it with me, so I share it. And messy makes me millions. And you, your mess is your message too. Your mess, what you've been through, the journey that you've been on, you wouldn't be wanting to, you know, your story stems from your mess, the stuff that you've gone through. So, and your story as your journey, as your business evolves, you will evolve. Just because you're starting in a certain space in your business right now, doesn't mean in a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you're going to be in the same space. So I was helping women with transformation and then goal setting. And then as they were achieving their goals, they wanted to move into business and still wanted to work with me. That's how my business turned into business strategy. And now my passion is visibility because that's my story. That's where my, the beginning of my journey and where like I was stuck in my business when I first started was my fear of being seen. Now I have a podcast around it. If you would have told me that six years ago, I would have been like, right? So just enjoy the journey. That'll, you know, and know that your mess is getting you to where you need to be. And that's going to be part of your future stories around helping others in your, while you're building your business. It always compounds. It always builds the next part of your story. Just keeps evolving as you go. Mine is, it sounds like yours is as well. You're just ever growing. You're ever, ever expanding into whatever the next thing is. And just pushing through that comfort zone is, uh, it's tough. So I sympathize with anybody that is struggling with that. But at the same time, it's, it's the encouragement to help people get through that. Cause that's where the messy action, which messy makes you millions or makes my millions. Tell me, say that one more time. Messy. Messy makes me million. Mace, messy makes me millions. I'm going to start repeating that to myself all the time. And I also want to go back. You said comparison itis. Is that what term you, you threw out there? Comparison itis? I've never before. heard that's what I call it. I, love it. I just want to make sure that, that that that's why I want that time stamped in the podcast. Comparison itis. So uh Heidi Shaw uh trademarked that or copyrighted I that I don't know here if I on trademarked. the Rich Wine Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I just thought that was a cool term. I, that'll be something that I think people will take away. They can think about that comparison itis because I think we all suffer from that as well. So if, uh, and I know you work with generally with women, uh, but even guys out there that are listening to the podcast today, let's say they're like, okay, I can get through the hurdle of jumping on and going live or even producing content, or even maybe they already are producing content. Uh, let's help them think through the process of a six figure, a seven figure business and thinking about how that even, 
they're listening to this and they're hearing you saying that it's possible and we can do it and you're doing it and you're helping others do it, but they're like, yeah, there's no way. I don't even see that for myself. You know, where does that even begin? Let's maybe help some people at the very beginning of their journey to understand and comprehend how they can even get a process like that started for themselves. Yeah, that's a great question. So it, whether you're a female or a male, it starts in the same spot. Like what lights you up, right? You want it, and, and when I say this, I don't want somebody just going, okay, well, this lights me up. And if it's not going to make you money, like you, you want to go in business doing something that's going to make you money. But you also like we, we join, we become entrepreneurs because we have a passion for, you know, we are, we have a mission, we have a purpose. So what is that for you? And so for some people, it's really hard to figure out their purpose. And I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves. And again, action brings clarity. So even if it's not the right step or you felt you go like, that's not the right direction. That's what the word pivot means. And there's so many, I pivoted three times. And I may continue to pivot. You may continue to, you may pivot, Randy. Like it's, chances are, like I said, where you are now is not where you're going to be because you're going to grow and evolve as you and your clients are growing and evolving. When it comes to branding, so many people get stuck on trying to create the perfect brand. You may go through a few rebranding in over your evolution as an entrepreneur. Most people do, and that's okay. It's not wrong. It's just as you grow and evolve, your branding is going to grow and evolve. If you, you know, if you are a gentleman and you're starting off your entrepreneurial journey as a single, as a single guy, and then you get married, guess what? Your branding is going to pivot a little bit because that your branding, like you use an extension of you. Once you have children, guess what? Your branding is going to change. So just taking action and going, okay, what lights me up? And that typically comes from something that you've gone through yourself. So what is the transformation that you've gone through? Does that excite you that you want to help other people go through? And then once you do that, you want to look for people out there in, in the market space who are doing, who are really successful at it. And you want, to, you want to research them. And if you don't find anybody out there doing what you want to help people with, then that's a sign to tweak that. Because if nobody's doing it, there's a reason. For it. You don't want to be the pioneer. There's way too many people in the online space. For you to become an influencer, viral, like the way things were, chances are it's not going to happen. But that doesn't, because there's just so many people in the space. And I'm not saying it's saturated, saturated. I, there people say there are. I believe everybody, there's plenty of people out there and everybody can be successful. You just got to find your special, unique messaging. And that's another thing when it comes to comparisonitis. When you do the research, when it comes to your messaging and you're researching other people, entrepreneurs who are crushing and in your space, you can emulate, like emulate what they're doing, right? Because they're successful. Don't reinvent the wheel, but use what makes you unique and your messaging and your transformation. Share that. Don't try to copy what they're doing because even if you do, it's not going to land for people because it's not authentically you. So when you're starting, don't try to be someone you're not. And a lot of entrepreneurs do that. They try to be further than they are or try to be something they're not because they think that's what they need to be. That's who they need to be for people to work with them. And that's not the truth. If you are, a, I say this all the time, if you're a white t-shirt, you know, and a jeans kind of guy or gal, then that's who you show up with online. And that's who you're, how you're going to bring your people in. Just because somebody else is maybe creating seven figures, eight figures, and they're walking around in business suits and they're branding, that's not you. Don't do it because it's not going to land with your audience. And again, you're not at the seven, eight figure mark yet. So it's definitely not you, right? So be authentically you. And even when you're eight figures, you don't even have to be like that. I know there are plenty of them that are walking around in jeans and tank tops all the time because that's who they are and that's who they enjoy being. So there's, you know, I've shared a lot there right now, but basically what lights you up? What gets you excited? Is there a transformation you've moved through that you are excited to help others move through? Don't compare yourself to other people. This is your journey. You can do your research because you want to know what they're doing that's working. Don't, you don't have to start from scratch and reinvent the wheel. Hire mentorship. Do that as soon as you can. Your, another thing is hire before you're ready. So not only mentorship, but hire someone to help you as soon as you can because that's going to be really important to take stuff off your plate so you can continue focus on getting clients because if you're not making money in your business, you have a very expensive and that's not the goal. And then again, lean into your story, your message and who you are and don't be afraid to share the uniqueness and what makes you different because that's how you're going to rise to the top on social media faster 
is by sharing those things that make you different. Your quirks, your craziness. If you're, you know, if you're funny, be funny. If you're more serious, be be that. Don't try to be funny if you're more of a serious type of person. Because it's not. Yeah, I'm not a Does serious kind of person. Did, did, well, yeah, cool. did you get that from me? I'm not a very serious cool. person. Did you get that? <laughs> I'm not either. So my, my kids, my my kids not, might not agree sometimes, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, we'll figure it out, right? <laughs> Roll That's with the it. action. I love it. I love it. So one of the things that I've noticed, and I remember doing this when I was first beginning my journey as far as uh, trying to figure out this entrepreneurial online space. I can go back as far as 2010, back when I, my, I actually have, still have a YouTube channel that if somebody searched really hard, they could find it of some videos of me back then. Uh, anyways, and I was trying to figure it out as far as like equipment, like like you said, with lighting and this is before the stuff that we have today. I mean, it's amazing what we can do with just our phones. And uh, anyways, I guess my question is, is once again, somebody just getting started, they're, they're, they've got their message or they feel like they've got a message to share. What is your recommendation for people that think that they have to go out there and get the big lights and the cameras? And I mean, we're using microphones today, but I didn't start out with this microphone. I actually upgraded once, you know what I mean? It's, it's getting that idea of getting started messy action up front versus thinking that you're, once again, you're going to have perfection. You're going to have everything all right. in this nice little pretty box or pretty bow. Um, maybe help some folks with that, that part of the process as well. Yeah. Same thing as I've been sharing this whole time, just take action. You don't need any fancy equipment. You know, my laptop is not running like it, it did before. That has a much better camera on there than my PC, which I'm on right now. So I went to Amazon didn't go to it, went on it and ordered a $20 Nexigo camera. That's what I'm on right now. And it's a super clear camera. You don't need expensive, fancy equipment. My, like, in my opinion, it's a waste of your money. I'd rather see you hire a VA, a virtual assistant that can help you take some things, so, you know, help you with content, help you with other things, building your email list versus spending a lot of money on fancy equipment. Um, you know, I have one ring light here. I had another one. It just went went so I have to order I'm gonna order another one. That was a twenty dollar one that broke. It lasted me two years. Best one of the best investments. Two years for twenty bucks, I'll take it all day long. This microphone isn't super expensive. I started off with a snowball. When I started my podcast, the snowball really wasn't appropriate for the podcast. It wasn't working. I'd have to hold it. So I invested in this one. Um but you just you 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 add as you grow, but again you can do everything on your phone. You can go live on your phone. You can record a reel on your phone. You can, you can make graphics on Canva on your phone. Literally, your phone is the only thing you really, really need. And again, be real. As long as you're being you and having fun along the way and in, in, in being truly yourself and, you know, be open with people. Tell them, I just put a video out. Wasn't my best, but hey, you know, there's, let me know what you think. I'm learning, you know, I'm learning. What do you think of my new, you, you know, like, what do you think of the graphics that I added to my reel? Like, I would love your feedback. You just started off with learning this cap cut, you know, editing software. Like, you can, you can ask for people's opinion and get them involved. People want to see you win. They don't want to see you fail. Like, we are, so, we have this fear of failure, but if you're honest and open and truthful with your people, they want to see you rise up. They want to give you the feedback and if you ask for it and just you just have fun with it. So don't go buying the expensive stuff. You don't need it. And you, you'll get further faster by just using the basics. Agreed. I'm glad you said all that because I agree with that completely. So I'd see anybody that approaches me, my me asking. Is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Right now. And we're yeah, just rolling with it. Like at least we're yeah, showing. Yeah, just make it happen. Know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm the same way. For, uh, yeah, you can have simple, basic things that, like you were talking, like twenty dollars items, very relatively inexpensive items that can really make a big difference, but they're not thousands and thousands of dollars. I think you can get caught up, you know, like you said, going to Amazon or even being told by some other influencers that you have to have this, and you have to have that. And in my experience, that's not the case. So I'm I'm glad you shared that as well because I wholeheartedly believe that also that it's not required to be successful out here, at least producing content and adding value to your to the marketplace, right? Which is what it's all about. Exactly. So then let's and shift in. Can I add on to that? No, please. You and absolutely even, can. Please. Even the um, like even all the products that we need. So we do need some we do need some things to to help our business. Like we do need an email form to hold house our emails. So you can Mailchimp is well, it used to be free. It's not free anymore, but it's it's low cost. So finding those types of platforms that are free. Canva 
when you're starting out, I pay for Canva now because I have a team that helps me and is in there. But you can have Canva for free. Start out using the free stuff. And then as you're growing, then you can elevate and buy the page if you need to. AI, there's so many free AI things out there. Hope you know that can support you in creating your content. Now, make sure you're making that content your own. But at the same time, there's so many free tools out there. Um, so just make sure that you are util utilizing those before you're making these huge investments into things you don't need to invest in. Websites. You do not need a website. I have a beautiful website. I love it. And I have an amazing website developer. And I always refer her to people. That being said, right now, when you're starting out, all you need is a landing page. You do not need a website when you're getting started. So don't spend the thousands on a website because you feel you need to Literally, you can build a, a cheap landing pages through these cheap platforms that can get you started, and then you can grow as you. A lot of times, I believe, and don't quote me 100 percent on this. I'm curious if you, you're aware of this or not. But when on the uh, uh, the mail service provider or the emails, whether it's Mailchimp, Aweber, there's different kinds. But a lot of times, you can build landing pages through that service. Um, right through them, mm -hmm. yeah. and even Zoom. Yeah, right. Yeah, Zoom yep, has a free 100%. capability. So if you're if you're running a webinar or a masterclass or a challenge, you literally can go into Zoom and for free, you can build your landing page. Your you people can um can opt in from from Zoom. You can run it in Zoom, and then you can also set up an after like an an after campaign. So a follow up campaign right through Zoom, and it's all free. Love it. Great resource. Appreciate you sharing that as well. I don't think I was aware of the Zoom one, but I, like I said, I've shared the one about the uh, email, the mail, MailChimp. I know Aweber. You can build landing pages from there as well. Uh, so whether if you're paying for the service, then obviously that comes along with that service, which is which is super cool. So let's pivot. I love you use the word pivot. That's my word. I think you stole that one from me because I, I use the word pivot all the time. No, I don't think you did. But I just wanted to, to say that I use that word all the time. I'm always pivoting. Uh, so let's pivot in the conversation a little bit as far as the uh, thinking about that that person that, okay, we've gotten them from getting over the hurdle of producing content, going live, talking about a little some of the little technical things in the background. But now they need to like, they need to offer something and they're scared to death to ask somebody either for an email or even for um, whether it's even a payment for a small program that they might have going on. How do you help people get through that process as far as the hurdle of the sale? And it doesn't have to be for money, but it can be obviously asking for an email in exchange for a sign up or anything like that. Let's let's help some folks with that as well. Well, the, what I tell my clients is because I do work with women and a lot of women do have, they, want, they don't want to feel salesy. They don't want to feel slimy. So that is a mindset shift. So we do need to work on the mindset around that. So again, where is this stemming from? You know, what, where, where is this, you know, uncomfortable and not, not coming from or asking for money. And then I always just lean into selling a survey. But if you are not making your offer, somebody's not being helped. So if you are mm -hmm. not being paid, someone's not getting helped. And you need, you get to get paid for your expertise and somebody gets to invest in their transformation. And they're more invested in that transformation when they're investing money into it. And it's been, like, I've seen it number and number of times again. I've done it where I've done things for free. And anytime I, most of the time, I won't say every time, the majority of the time that I've done something for free, the person didn't follow because they weren't invested. But when somebody's paying for it and they're putting money down, they are investing themselves going, I really want this. And when they really, really want it and they invest in that way, they're, they're going to do the work. They're going to show up and do the work. So again, it's not, they're not just investing in you, which they're investing in their transformation and they're investing in themselves. And just, I always go back to it. If you want to write this down for you who's listening, put it on a sticky somewhere, selling is serving. If somebody's, if you're not being paid, somebody's not being helped. And if you're not selling, if you're not making your offers, if you're not out there being seen and visible and sharing your expertise and why you're different and why you're better, and why you can get this result for somebody better than anybody else can, somebody else is making the offer and they're not as good as you. And that person that's paying them is now get, not getting the help that they needed because you are hiding and not making your offer in order to get to that result. That they're looking. Love that. Thank you. That was awesome. Hopefully folks have rewind that one too, because that would be re-listen to that one. 
that will help you get some courage when it's time to make that offer to speak to folks, to folks, right? That's something that a lot of us struggle with, whether it's from upbringing, whether it's just from our, our experiences that we're dealing with, even as adults, it's a challenge. But once you get beyond that and think of that, like you said, selling is serving. I love that. So that's something I'm going to remind myself even as we go through the process that you're trying to help people. And that's what it's all about. You're trying to serve. That's, that's fantastic. It always comes back to that focusing out when, you know, when you feel stuck or you're feeling, you know, uncomfortable about it, focus out. How can I help someone else and take that focus off yourself? And when you do that, the magic. Great. So speaking of focusing out, let's pivot again. Let's start talking about the Be She podcast. I know that's a huge passion of yours. You're out there trying to serve as many people as you possibly can, which is exactly what I'm trying to do even on my podcast, right? Trying to find great folks to bring on, have great conversations, teach and learn, right? You're learning right along within the conversation, but go into detail as far as like, talk about the Be She podcast, uh, what you're trying to do with, with your podcast and uh, who would be the best fit to come check you out over there on, on obviously it's probably all over, right? Any of the podcast platforms, but yeah, go into detail. Tell us about the Be She podcast. Yeah, I thank you because this I love this story and this this actually this process taught me a lot and I'm grateful for the journey of this podcast because in 2022 I created a vision board that I had on my computer I have one now and in 2022 one of the pieces on there was a podcast and I put it on there and I forgot about it and I see the thing every day but I never I kept missing the podcast and November rolled around and I had just come back from a conference and I had met a podcast producer at that event, which is interesting because uh, I never even put two and two together when I met her. And November came and I was like looking at the vision board. I'm like, oh, I haven't started my podcast. And it's at the end of the year. I need to start my podcast. And so I reached out to her and I'm like, can you help me? And she said, yes. So I was like, awesome. I've got to get it launched by December 20, you know, by December 31st, got to launch it. So she's like, okay, these are the steps and no problem. We can make that happen. So she gave me the outline of everything she needed from me. I came up with the name. And, you know, it was a phenomenal name, I thought. I don't know if it, if it would be trademarked issued, but I'll share it with everybody because if anybody wants it, you can have it. It's called, it was Monopoly. Like, I wanted to serve mompreneurs. So I came up with Mama. And, um, and I was like, this is fun. It's a play on a game and it's about moms and, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, of how the Monopoly game is played. So I'm like, this would be cool. And, but I was in, I, there was something that just didn't feel like right. So I sat with it and we were moving forward with it. And we were about to brand it. And I'm like, just don't feel alive. With it. Something's not right. So I, I reached out to her. I said, listen, I'm pushing the deadline back. Like there is no deadline. We're going to let this go. It's not going to happen this year. So I'm just going to trust that everything's going to work out as it, it gets to happen. Because I'm usually let's force a square peg into a round hole type of person when it comes to my business. You know, got to set the goals, got to make them happen. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to let this one ride. So I really want to get this right. So I let it go. And in just, that was in December. Later, I think a week or two later, we, I, my kids and I traveled to New Hampshire to see my mom and my stepdad. And then my mom and me and my kids flew to New York to meet my sister and my niece. And we were spending over New Year's there. And we were taking, my son was seeing, we were seeing Hamilton for my son because he loves musical theater. Ice skating for my daughter because she's an ice skater. We're taking my, my niece to, you know, we're taking the kids to the Rockettes. My niece is a dancer. So we were hitting all the, all the things. And we were having a great time, relaxed, and I didn't think about the podcast. One morning I woke up and I sat up in bed in my hotel and I go, be she, be seen, be heard, be empowered. I said, that's my, con that's my podcast. And I called, my, I messaged my producer and I'm like, this is my title. She's like, I love it. And it's not the easiest, you know, title for people. People aren't just going to research it. And I knew that. So that was one of the, like, the, the things that could hold me back in the, in the, in the, you know, expansion of it or the, the, the big pop, you know, it, it, it flooding, you know, the, the, the airwaves or whatever. But I was like, this gets to be a movement. It gets to be something I build over time. And it's not something I'm looking to launch and go crazy over right out of the gate. So I knew it was going to be a journey. I'm really extremely proud of it. And the biggest thing for me was like, wow, I trusted. I didn't force the square peg into a round hole. And I, now I teach that too. It's another part of my journey that I get to share. And, get, and I tell the entre all entrepreneurs, like, again, don't compare your chapter two to someone's chapter 20. And don't try to force something. You get to be aligned with where you want to go. You get to be aligned with your business. You get to be aligned with your clients. You can say no to working with people. You don't have to say yes to everybody. 
this is your business. You want to enjoy it. So the Be She podcast, again, it stands for Be Seen, Be Heard, Be Empowered. And it is geared toward female entrepreneurs, but men are welcome to listen to it. If, you know, if there's anything that you're stuck in inside of your business, we, I bring in entrepreneurs talking about their journey, sharing their fears, their challenges, how are they overcame them in their business. And, um, and I've loved it, you know, up and all along started about, so I was going to launch, I was trying to launch it in December of 2022. I launched it in April of 2022. So. That was about the same time mine did as well. It. Mine was the first yeah, week awesome. of April of 23. You just said that I had to just do some math in my mind. Yeah. Same here. That's yeah. super cool. And I love the name of yours. So you, like it's a great name. I appreciate that. So that, so you coming up with your title or with your, your brand name, that's exactly that's very similar to what happened to me. I was just pondering it, pondering it for the longest time. I couldn't think of what I wanted it to do. So I tried to focus on a little bit of business, financial education, but then also the mindset piece, right? Personal development. Those are like my two key areas. And so I, it just hit me one day, the rich mind. And I, it just, it's just stuck. I mean, I, I threw it out there to a couple of people and they're like, yeah, I kind of like that. So yeah, I same similar type of thing, which then allows me then to be passionate about it because I, I enjoy it, right? I enjoy the topic. Uh, right. I could bring on people just like you that are out there crushing it, doing so well in your business and helping other people. But then we can have some different conversations about marketing and, and all kinds of different stuff. I just love all facets of business. It's just a lot of a lot of fun. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. And the podcast like opens just different I, avenues of creativity. So like for we're, we're, we're working toward, I just talked to a publisher, we're working towards putting together a collaborative book around Be She and allowing women entrepreneurs to share their stories, share their journeys and, and empowering other women to step up into their dreams and goals. So if they can, you know, each woman, maybe they can't write their own, you know, because it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of work to write your own book. It's and not every book makes it. So if we can put a collaboration together and work together as a unit, which I'm all about collaborating, um, then, you know, we're just going to help other women out there. So this DC is now turning into the possibility of a collaborative experience with writing book and maybe multiple volumes of the book around the BC movement. Um, I'm now pivoting more and it brought me back to my roots of being scared to be seen when I started my business and how I was stuck for a long time. And now I want to help other women move through that. And, you know, now that's becoming like the visibility piece is my, the forefront of the business strategy now, which before it wasn't. Now it is. I want to help women get on stages. I want to help them overcome their fear. I want them to be visible, seen and heard in their business, but also in their lives. So if they're in their personal lives, if they're feeling like they can't think in their relationships, you know, how are, are you holding back from being seen and heard in your relationship? And why is that? So, yeah, it, it's becoming much bigger. Um, than I anticipated. And I'm really, I'm just really thrilled about the journey and the ride and we'll see where it goes. That's where it becomes super fun because you just don't know. You just kind of launch and once you get used to, we talked about that through this, this whole thread of conversation that we've had, right? Just taking messy action because you don't necessarily know where it's going to lead. So even the visions that you have today may not pan out hundred percent exactly accurate to what you think to even today. And that to me is what keeps it exciting because you just don't ever know who the next person it's like meeting you, you know, who knows where any of this is going to lead in the future, which is what makes it super fun and super, super exciting. At least for me, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a word they say solopreneur. So when you're starting out, you're a solopreneur, but with that word, I want people to know you don't need to be solo. Don't fly solo. I'm a recovering. I shared with you perfectionist, also lone wolfer. I felt like I could do it on my own. It's going to be, a really long journey and chances are you're going to fail in this journey if you go it alone. So if it's find mentorship, find community, get on podcasts, collaborate with other entrepreneurs, you get to have fun on this journey and you're going to go further faster when you're doing it with other people versus by getting, creating your own stage through your social media platform, through your virtual events, but also getting on other people's stages and in front of other people's audiences and you get to build those relationships and then reciprocate. Like just community is everything. Connection is currency. Collaboration is currency. So, but collaboration starts with making relationships and building those connections. Hundred percent, hundred percent, fantastic. So, I didn't. I don't remember if I shared this with you before we hit record or not. But I, you've shared so much wisdom and, and nuggets of, of wisdom so far, even today. But I would love to, as we start to bring this one in for a landing, I would love for you to just. Is there one more piece 
of wisdom. Anything that it can be inspirational. It can be even a story. Anything that kind of comes to you right now as we start to bring this in for a close for the listener out there that that maybe they're just right on the fence. They're like, I've got something. We're in the middle of 2024 as of this recording. Uh, there's still six, five, six months left of the year. There's still time to get a lot accomplished here uh, in the next few months. Uh, just anything at all that you might, uh, that comes to you as far as some inspiration for those that are listening as we start to wind this one up here today. Yeah, I'll make it super succinct. The first thing is, is like if you have an idea and you're not getting started yet or whether you're wanting to pivot or whether you're ready to scale, you have to be seen. You need to get attention because without attention, you're not going to get anywhere. Like you definitely, you're, you need to know your story. You need to get your, you need to, you know, work on your messaging. But the first thing is you have to get visible because if you have your message dialed in, but you're, nobody knows who you are and you're not putting yourself out there, it's going to go nowhere. Um, the second thing is, is visibility is your responsibility. If you truly want to help people, which I know you do, if you want to be an entrepreneur and you're wanting to help people transform, it's your responsibility to get out there and put your message out there and make your offers so that those people can be helped. And you, everyone can be successful, but success comes from taking the first step. Boom. We're going to leave it right there. So Heidi, this has been a lot of fun. If folks are out there, and I know they are, they're thinking, okay, I need to figure out how to get in close proximity to Heidi. I need to get Heidi on my team. I need to get, somehow, I need to get in communication with Heidi. We've talked about the podcast, which is a great place for people to get to know you even a little bit better, hear you in different conversations with different folks. But at the same time, where are the best places for people to get in contact with you, learn more about the products and services that you have to offer there out there in the marketplace? Thank you. Yeah, I'll make it easy. Social media, Heidi Shop Coaching. So, and my name is Chalk with an S in front of it, my last name. So Heidi Shop Coaching. You can find me Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Also, and I'm on I'm on TikTok, I think too, and Pinterest. Um, <laughs> and then YouTube, we're, we're just restarting to relaunch the YouTube. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, you can also, my website's HeidiShop.com. I keep everything super simple to find me. Uh, but we do have three different programs. So if you're really looking to up your visibility, we have a program called Visibility is a Vibe. I'm happy to chat with you. You can go to scalewithheidi.com and book a call. That's the easiest way to book a call if you want to connect. And I can tell you more about that. We also have a, a program just for beginners called Business in a Box. When I first started my coaching program, I joined or coaching. I joined a coaching program, not and it was way over my budget the investment. And once I got in there, I needed to invest thousands more dollars into making that, that strategy happen. So I created business in a box to take the guesswork out and keep your business super like low money investing as far as getting started with your business. I want you to be able to get started without having to invest more and more and more. So we show you the basics on how to do that and make it super simple. Um, and then we also have our academy, Business by Design Academy, which is for those that are looking to scale. So wherever you're at in your business, we can support you. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to connect and just chat, I'm happy to, to give you your next step of wherever you are. Right now. Love that as well. So folks, get connected with Heidi. Uh, she mentioned all different kinds of places to do that, whether it's social media, her websites, her coaching programs, and we'll have all the links in the show notes. So if you're driving or any place where you can't uh, take some uh, written notes down, don't worry about that. Uh, they'll be in the show notes for you here on the episode. But get in contact with Heidi. Uh, as you can tell from this conversation, uh, this I knew this was going to be super fun. We had some technical difficulties the first time around. Uh, this time it's worked out really well. So yeah, I'm super excited to get this one edited and out there, posted out there for people to, to take and, and uh, use the information that she shared. I'm telling you, you're going to the different little segments there. Each one of those was packed full of nuggets of wisdom that you're going to want to re-listen to again. If you're at the beginning stages of this entrepreneurial journey, it's you might be working for somebody right now and you know for sure that you need to do something different, whether it's going to be because you're choosing or because you have a feeling that something's going to happen to you potentially in your environment. This is the these are the types of ideas. This is the type of wisdom that you're going to need to bridge that gap from this unsure moment in your life, maybe to this uh, dream life that she's willing to help you do. And that's uh, super exciting. So uh, yeah, definitely need to get in contact with Heidi as soon as you possibly can. But uh, Heidi, I appreciate you taking your time today. I appreciate you hanging in there with me with the, through the technical difficulties and just adding so much value to the, to the listeners today. That's been super fun. I really appreciate you joining us. 
Yeah, thank you, Randy. This has been such an honor and pleasure. And thank you for hanging with me through the technical difficulties, too. Yeah. <laughs> this has been awesome. We, and, uh, you know, and like I said, I think the theme of this is perfectly imperfect, right? So, and, uh, and we had a lot of fun, and I'm just so grateful for this time with you and your time. So thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Taking messy action. I actually had a thunderstorm rolling through as we were going today, and I was like, it's going to drop, and it didn't. It didn't. And that's a whole nother story, folks. But anyways, go out there. Have a fantastic day. Uh, connect with Heidi. As I mentioned, you connect with me as well. I'll be more than happy to try to help you through your entrepreneurial journey as well, through the Rich Mind Podcast and all the different platforms that I'm on as well. You can connect with me through the links that I'll also have in the show notes. So go out there, as I mentioned, have a fantastic day. I look forward to bringing back another guest again very soon. Until then, bye now. <laughs>